Hey everyone, so I am so excited to announce that I have built the ultimate battleship game. I say ultimate because it really took me a long time to incorporate all the features that I wanted. By this I mean that I really wanted to be able to flip each of the battleships around based on which one we choose, so for it to be placed horizontally or vertically. I also have to make sure that the battleship doesn't go in squares that are not valid, so for example at the end of the board. And then I also wanted to make sure that we can't place battleships on spaces that are already taken by battleships. And on top of that, I wanted to add this cool hover effect as well. So this all took a while to figure out, but I'm glad I did it. And then of course we have the game logic. So we take our go and we try to sync the computer's battleship. And then after a while, the computer takes its go and then it's back to our turn. And we all get prompted if we sync one of the computer ships, as well as if we sync all of the ships. So really excited. This is a bit of a more advanced tutorial for all you JavaScript developers out there. So please make sure you've covered the fundamentals. And as always, I've left the styling super basic on purpose so that you can take this at the end, make it your own, style it up, like go crazy. This is not a styling tutorial. We're just going to get the logic done. So what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Right, so first off, just start off on your code editor and just create a new project. I am on WebStorm, so all I'm going to do is select new project. I'm going to select an uh, empty project, and then I'm just going to call this Battleships, just like so. Maybe let's make it JS Battleships to be more precise, and click Create. So that will now be created in a directory of my choice. And next, we're just going to have to go ahead and put in the correct files. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. It's going to be an HTML file that I'm going to call index and I'm going to choose HTML5 and then it's just going to give the .html extension and then it's added some boilerplate code. So please go ahead and add that if you need as well. Okay, so this is what your index HTML file should look like. I've just made it a little bit bigger and I'm just going to call this JS Battleships just like so and hit save. Now, what else do we want to put in here? Well, we are going to have to put in some structure to our web page. So I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller. And first off, I'm actually just going to create a div that's going to hold our game info. So I'm going to give this the ID of game info, just like that. And in here, I'm going to create a P element that is going to say turn and we're going to essentially put in a span so we can break up this element and then we can essentially inject some text in here using JavaScript. So I'm going to leave it blank for now, but I am going to give this whole span element, so this whole thing right here, an ID so we can pick it out in our JavaScript. So I'm going to call this turn display. Okay. And then just like we did above, I'm going to have another P element that's going to hold some extra information. So this is going to display whose turn it is right by essentially injecting some text into here. And once again, I'm just going to use the span element so we can break up this P element. And I'm going to give this the ID of info because we're going to put an extra info into here, into this span element by picking it out by its ID. Great. We could have, of course, picked out the whole span element, right? But there's two, so that would have caused issues. Hence, we've given them an ID so we can pick out this one and this one. Okay, so once we have that, I'm just going to format this a little bit better. I'm going to create a, another div, and this div, well, it's actually going to hold both our game boards. And I'm going to once again inject not just text this time, but whole elements into here using JavaScript. So once again, I'm just going to give this the ID so we can do that. And I'm going to give this the ID of games board container. So just like so. Great. So those are things that we can now pick out. It says it's a typo, but you know, I think it's fine. Next, I'm going to create yet another div. So this div this time, well, this is going to hold all our options. So all these ships that we can essentially pick out. So I'm going to call this option container just like so. Okay. So there we go. And now in here, I'm going to create one div and this is going to be one ship. So basically, I'm going to make sure that each ship 
has the class name of itself, right? So let's go with destroyer. And let's call it preview because we just want these ships to be little. So I'm going to go preview just like so. And let's also make it draggable. True, as we know, we want to be able to drag these little ships, these preview ships onto the board. So we want five of these, right? So here's one. And then we also have the submarine. Okay. And then after the submarine, we also have the cruiser. So I'm just going to put cruiser. What else do we have? We have an actual battleship. So let's put battleship just like so. And then I'm also going to put in one more. And that's the carrier. That's the largest one that has five little blocks. So there we go. So now let's pick these out, right? But of course, we need to link up our style sheet first in order to be able to apply styling. So here is my link element it's a self-closing element i'm going to put rel style sheet and i'm going to link it up with a href to our style sheet which we are yet to create so just here on the same level as the index i'm going to create a new file it's going to be a style sheet and let's call this styles css okay so the dot css extension makes sure that the code editor knows to treat this as a css file great so that's what we've done to just make that a little bit smaller. I think we're okay now to start styling things up a little bit. So let's do it. Well, first off, what I'm going to do, maybe let's just grab the options container first, right? So let's grab that option container and we're grabbing it by the class, which means I need to use dot. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger for us. Dot, because we're grabbing the class name of option container. And I'm just going to hard code a width for it. I'm gonna go, 500 pixels, a height of 50 pixels, background color, yellow I'm going to go with, as soon as I can get the prompt, yellow. Okay, so there we go. This is looking good. Okay, great. And of course, now we need to link up that style sheet. So back in here, I'm going to go, well, it's on the same level. So all I need to do is grab that file. So now our style sheet and our index HTML are linked up. And if I open the index HTML file in the browser, so I can do it by clicking here on WebStorm, or if you're using a different code editor, you can just copy the path, copy the absolute path, and then in your browsers, just paste in that like so. So there we go, that's our options container, the yellow thing. If you inspect the page, you can also see it here. So these are all the elements that we've put into our document so far. And the option element, of course, has five divs with these classes, which are going to symbolize our ships. Great. Let's get to making the ships. So I'm going to copy the class of destroy preview, destroy a preview. And I'm just going to paste it in here like so, because we're going to create a ship. So the destroyer preview, well, I think the destroyer preview, destroyer is two by one in ratio. So I'm just going to give it a width of 20 pixels and a height of 10 pixels to kind of mimic that two to one ratio. And let's also space it out from everything else by giving a margin of three pixels. Now I could also add the color on here. However, I know in the future that I want to be able to reuse the class name of destroyer on many different things. So this is one class name and it's essentially going to add the width, the height and the margin to this whole div. But I'm going to now also create another class. So up here of destroyer, which is going to assign the color. So I'm going to go background color. Let's go with brown, which means that now I need to add this class name along with this other one. So I'm going to put a space. Now this div has two classes. So this one assigning the width, the height and the margin, and this one assigning the color. I've kept both separate and we will see why later. So now you will see that little ship right in there. Wonderful. Let's carry on. So great. We've done it for the destroyer. Next, let's also do the submarine. 
So maybe let's, yeah, let's do the preview first. So dot summary preview, thank you, tab nine. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is a three to one ratio. So I'm gonna give it a width of 30 pixels, a height of 10 pixels, and also a margin this time of three pixels, okay? And let's also add the submarine color, which I'm gonna keep separate. So I'm gonna go with background color. What background color should we give this? Maybe let's give it a green, so green. Okay, and this just means, oh wait, we forgot to do one thing. We need to add the color class to the submarine. Okay, so the div with the class of submarine preview, and great. We now have our two ships. Let's carry on. So we have the submarine, the cruisers next. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and add all these class names. So cruiser, battleship, carrier, which is gonna be in charge of adding the color, and this can be a reusable class. So let's do the cruiser next, dot cruiser, making sure that is a dot. Let's give the cruiser purple, so background color purple. And then let's do the battleship, the battleship, I'm gonna make orange, background color orange. And one more, the cruiser, the longest one. So the cruiser, let's make it blue, background color. Great, and now let's assign the heights and widths. We've got the submarine preview. The next thing we need to do is the, which one, the cruiser preview? Why do we have cruiser twice? Carrier is the last one, sorry, let's make this a carrier. Okay, so the cruiser is next, dot cruiser preview. And the cruiser is gonna be uh, again, it's actually going to be the same as this one, so I just copy that. And then battleship preview is going to be a four to one ratio. So in fact, I could just copy this. If you really wanted to, you could add another class name that will just assign the height and the margin to all the ships as we are kind of, you know, using it in these five. But that's up to you. I've kind of gone with this way, so I'm not going to bother. But um, if you really wanted to refactor, then you could. Cruiser preview is the last one that we're going to do. And once again, this is a five to one ratio this time. So I'm just gonna change the width to be 50. Again, I put cruiser and it should be carrier. Carrier, I need to remember that that's the fifth one. Okay, so there we have our five ships at the moment. I, however, don't want to be stacked on top of each other. I want the good to go left to right. So I'm gonna use display flex for this. But let's just recap what, how many ships we have. We have five. We have the destroyer, the submarine, the cruiser, the battleship, the carrier, which will now, whenever we add this class to any element, will have these colors. And once again, the small ships, so we can see are the destroyer preview, the submarine preview, the cruiser preview, and the battleship preview, and the carrier, not cruiser, carrier is the fifth one, the largest one. Great. So now on the options container, I did say I want them to go from left to right. And for this, I'm gonna initialize Flexbox. So display Flex. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. And now they should look like this. But if I wanna center them from top to bottom, I'm also going to use something else and that's align items center. And because we have a height, that should work. Okay, so there we are. I have just centered them. This is looking really good. Another thing I'm just gonna do is space out this options container. So I'm also actually just gonna give it a margin from top to bottom 30 pixels and left and right zero because I'm gonna now want to add stuff to the top and bottom. So just above this options container and below it. So let's continue with that. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is add two buttons. One is gonna to be to flip all of the above ships, the ship previews. So let's give this the ID of flip button, just like so. And then another button, so I'm just gonna copy this whole button. And this is going to be to start the game. So I'm just gonna put start, and I'm gonna give this the ID of start button. Yeah, start button is fine. Great. 
So I believe this is now it for our HTML. For now, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. So we have our games board in which we're going to put in the two games boards. We have our div with the game info. We have our options container and we have a button to flip all the ships and a button to start the game. Okay, great. So before we move on, I'm just going to put a script tag here. So script so that we can link this up to our JavaScript file. So source, and I'm just going to put app.js because that's what I'm going to call my file. So now in here on the same level as all of these, I'm going to create a new file. It's a JavaScript file. And you can, you don't, if you don't have a code editor where you can select that, all that's doing is just allowing me to add the .js extension. So app.js is what I am going to call my file. And there we go. Great. So this is what everything should look like now at the moment. Let's carry on. So first off, I think we should work on flipping these battleships, right? So let's do it. Let's pick out this button by its ID. So if we look in here, the idea of this is flip button. So, you know, you could just copy that if you are scared about making spelling mistakes. And I'm just going to make this bigger for you. I'm going to use document query selector to look in my whole document and look for anything with the ID. So hash is ID of flip button. And let's save this as something. I'm going to just call this flip button because, you know, that's what it is. So flip button. Just like so. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. So now let's write a function to flip. So I'm going to call it function flip just like so. And let's attach this to the flip button. So let's grab that flip button and use add event listener. And if we click, so we're passing through the click event. That's one of many events we can pass through. I am not making it up. There's a whole list of these. And when we click, I essentially want to call this function. So that's what I am doing right now. Okay, if we click on the flip button, this function, this one right here, gets called. Great. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to look in the options container and get every single child of the options container. So essentially every single, let's have a look in here, it's divs. So I can write some code that will look for the element by the class name of option container. And then if a div lives inside of it, we can save it in our JavaScript. Okay, and there's a few. So we're gonna make an array out of this. So first off, I just need to, once again, use document query selector. Query selector. I'm gonna look in our document, this time for the element with a class of option container, right? The whole yellow thing. So I'm gonna grab this. And this time we're looking for a class, so I need the dot. And let's save this as option container. So const option, container is just what I'm going to call it. So now I can, well, I'm just going to show you what this looks like using the console log. I can get the whole option container, right? And I can get its children. So using this property, I can get all the children of an element. So let's check it out. I'm going to refresh and let's go to our console log. If I click the flip button, I find the element with the class of option container, which is a yellow thing. And then I get all his children. And there's five. It's the div with the class of destroyer preview and the class of destroyer. It's essentially all the ships. I've gotten all the children of this element, right? I've got all of them. Cool. But now that we have all of them, what do we want to do? Well, what I want to do at the moment, this is a, it's kind of an array. It's actually an HTML collection. So I'm just going to make sure it's an array by using array from these elements, just like so. So now if you refresh and I click, click, it's more of a traditional array. Okay. And I'm actually going to save this to something. I'm going to save this to const option ships because that is essentially what it is okay it's an array of option ships and now i'm going to essentially rotate each one so option ships for each ship or let's go ahead yeah let's call it 
an option ship. You can call it child, you can call it I, whatever you want. I'm gonna grab each option ship and I'm gonna use style, transform, and I'm just gonna rotate. So I'm essentially writing kind of like CSS, but in JavaScript, I'm applying some CSS in JavaScript. So I'm gonna use rotate and I've used back ticks because I do wanna be able to change this angle in the future. So, but for now, I'm just going to write it as a string. So let's go ahead and put, um, what do we want to do? 90 degrees, right? Okay. So I'm applying CSS in JavaScript, which means that if we click on here, they all, they all flip, right? Pretty cool. Okay, let's maybe just change the styling of this a tiny little bit. Let's just make it a little bit taller to accommodate for all the ships. So that's better. Okay, but of course, if we click on clicking on this, it doesn't flip again. This is because we need the angle to change from 90 to zero, from 90 to zero, and so on. So we can do so easily. I'm just going to go back here. And what I'm actually going to do is start off with the angle being zero. Okay, and I'm doing it outside of the flip function because we want to change this. It's kind of like a global variable. And if we did it inside the function, it would kind of reset each time. So that makes sense. So make sure it's there. And now let's write some code to be able to put in this angle right here. We want to change it from, if it's zero, we want to change to 90. And if it's 90, we want to change to zero, right? So this is the syntax for putting in variables into strings. You need the back ticks and then you use the dollar sign and these curly braces. And I'm just going to put the angle in like so. So save that. Now, so after we pick out all the ships, I want to say if angle, so if we click on it and then we check the angle and the angle deeply equals zero, well, then we want the angle to be 90, right? We want to flip. So we'll overwrite angle to be 90. However, so we can also do else. So we'll check for this. Otherwise, we know that angle must be 90, right? Okay, so then we want to change the angle back to zero. Okay, so let's talk this through. We start for angle being zero. We click flip. So we get the zero angle and we assign the value 90 to it and that's what gets passed through. So angle here is now 90. So if you press again, again, we check the if else statement. The angle is not zero, so it must be something else. So we change it to zero and we pass that through into here. So let's check that out. Ta-da! And now we are flipping. So the angle is changing from zero to 90 each time. Another, maybe more advanced way of doing this, which is a little bit neater and maybe a little bit more advanced, is getting the angle. And then if angle equals zero, then return 90, otherwise return zero. So this is essentially this. And then we're gonna assign either 90 or zero back to angle, okay? So once again, let's talk that through. We get the angle. We go to here, angle does equal zero, so then we return 90, but if it didn't, we return zero, and we save it back to angle, which then gets passed through into here. So again, this and this are the same. This is just a neater way of writing it, which maybe is a little bit more advanced. Great. So there we have it. We have now finished the, I guess, logic for flipping our options uh, in a horizontal or vertical way. Next, let's get to creating the board. So I'm going to go with option choosing here. And now let's create our boards. So creating boards. Okay, so to create our boards, I am going to indeed write a function, just making sure that the boards are spot correctly. So our boards, well, we want them to be 10 by 10. So that's a width const I can put here and use. And let's write our function. It's going to be a function called create board. Okay. And to create our board, well, we're going to have to create an element. I'm going to create a div, which is going to essentially be our game board container, which we're going to put into this div with the ID of games board container. So let's pick out this whole element by its ID. 
I'm going to do so up here. So document query selector, and I'm going to look for something by the ID of games board container, and let's save this as games board container. Just like so, okay? So that is what I have done. Is it an ID? It is indeed an ID. So that is looking good. Okay. So this time I'm actually going to use document create element to create a div. I'm going to create a div using JavaScript. So let's say this div as something that we can work with. I'm going to go with not games, but game board container singular. Okay, so game board container, there's no S here, singular. So that's what we made a div. We've saved it under this constant. And now I'm going to grab that and use class list add to add a class, which I'm yet to write of game board. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do, which means that now I can get this class name. Maybe let's do so up here above the options container. Let's grab the game board. And I'm essentially going to define how big I want my game board to be. I'm going to go with width 200 pixels, height 200 pixels. And we're going to be putting a lot of elements in here. So for now, perhaps I'll just leave it. Let's just give this a border. So now that, or let's just, let's add a color in JavaScript. Let's do that. So our game board is going to just be a square, but we won't really be able to see it because, you know, it doesn't really have a color or anything like that. So now again, I'm going to grab the games board container. So once again, we created a div, we added the class name of game board, which is going to give it a height and a width now. And then we are going to also assign a color. So for this, I'm going to use style, background, color. And for now, let's just go with, I don't know, pink. Okay, great. So we've got this div, but it's kind of floating around nowhere in JavaScript land at the moment. We need to actually put it into our HTML. So to do this, I'm going to grab the games board container. And I'm going to use append, so a method called append, and then pass through this game board container like so into the games board container. Okay, so singular, no S, going into the games board container, which is essentially this. All right. So now let's call this function. I'm just going to call it. So here's my function and I've called it using these two parentheses. And great, we've done it. We have successfully injected an element with the class name of board game and the background color of pink into the div with the idea of games board container. Cool, right? I can actually do this twice. So I can call this again. And then two boards will be added and so on and so on and so on. Okay, I do want to add two in, but actually, no, let's just leave that there for now. That is fine. So perhaps, though, we want them both to be different colors. So for the first one, I'm going to pass through yellow. And for the second one, I'm going to pass through pink. So now we're passing through something into the function. Let's call this color, which means I can now use color here. And for the first one, yellow, so yellow is here, is going to go woo, and then be assigned here. And with the second one, pink is going to go woo, and be assigned here, which means if we look in here, we now have two elements, each with different colors. I'm also now just going to maybe style up the games container that they are both in, so this one, so that both appear next to each other. So I'm just going to grab it like so, and then I'm going to hard code a width of 500 pixels for it. And I'm also going to use display flex so that both of the items are next to each other. And if I want the spacing to be equal, I can use justify content space between. Um, however, this is an ID. So just make sure to make that a hash and not a dot for class name. So now it will look like this. Great. That's Carry on. Let's carry on making our boards. At the moment, these are just two squares, right? I actually want to put in a lot of different squares in here. I want to put in 100 to be exact because this is 10 by 10. So let's go ahead and do that using a loop. So I'm going to create 100 divs and put them in here that are kind of like little squares and same for here. So 
let's actually create a class for that. So I'm going to give each div a class of block. And if I want 100 to fit into my game board, 10 by 10, well, 10 divided by 200 divided by 10 is 20. So let's give each block a width of 20 and a height of 20 pixels too. Cool. So that is my class that will give our divs the shape of a square. Mm -hmm. Now let's get to creating them. One other thing I want to actually do is actually get the games board container and just give it an ID so I can use the ID attribute for this. And I'm going to pass through a user next. So for this one, the first game I create is going to be for the player and the second one, one is going to be for the computer. So now let's pass through a second uh, argument into here. This is going to be user and player is going to be passed onto here and it's going to be passed onto here and see from computer from here to here to here. So now if we look at these and I just inspect one of these, you will see that ID has been added and this one has been given the ID of player as well. Uh, and of course, they have the class names and the background colors that we assign to them too in JavaScript. Okay, now let's create the blocks. So for this, I'm going to use a loop. Let's use a for loop. So for let i equals zero and as long as i is smaller than, well, 100, you can write 100 or you can use the width. So width multiplied by width. Either way is fine. I just think, you know, it's we already have the width there, so we might as well use it as much as we can. And it also makes it more readable, right? Because we're saying that we want uh, 10 by 10 squares, which is 100. Okay, and what do we want to do 100 times? Well, we want to go to the document and use create element to create a div. We want to create 100 divs. We want to save this as block. So we can then grab block, essentially the div we just made, and use class list, add, and then the class of block that we wrote. So this one right here, okay? So that's what we want to do. I'm also going to give each block an ID, just like we did above, and it's just going to be the index, which is i, okay? And the last thing we need to do is just grab this game board container and append each block into it, right? Because as we are looping, so we'll loop once, we'll create a div, we'll give it the class name of block, we'll give it an ID and put it into our games board container and this will happen 100 times. So now if we look in here, you won't see anything visually, but if you inspect this, let's go with this game board container and look inside, ta-da! you will see 100 blocks, each with an ID starting from zero. That's been turned into a string. That number has been turned into a string. However, look, they're going all the way down there, right? I don't want that. It doesn't look great. In fact, I'm just going to show you what this looks like because it's kind of hard to see. So let's give this a border solid one pixel black. And I'm going to make the border inside, so I'm going to use box sizing, border box, refresh. They go all the way down there. I don't want this. So I can stop this from happening by on the game board, I'm going to use display flex, so initialize flex box, which means now they all kind of like stack up here, but now I want them to wrap over each other. So now I can use flex wrap wrap and they will snake over each other like so. So this will be div with ID 9, and this will be div with ID 10, and so on and so on, all the way down to 99. Wonderful. Let's get rid of this border, because I don't want it. Great. So there we have our two game boards. This is the player one, this is the computer one. I think this is... Looking pretty good, to be honest. I think let's start making the ships next. Great. So this is everything to do with creating boards. I'm just gonna keep lumping things together to essentially make everything a little bit neater for us by the end. Okay. Let's move this flip button to be up here with the flip function. Okay, so here's a bit of code. 
And this is the bit of code that we need for creating a voice. So we zoom out. This should be what your code looks like. OK, let's carry on. So now let's get to the ships. So to create the ships, I'm actually going to use classes. So I'm going to use class ship. I'm creating a ship class. And I'm going to use the constructor to pass through the things that essentially are going to make my ship, which are going to be the name and the length. That's all I really need. So I'm going to use the, this keyword to tie essentially these uh, properties to the ship object. And this is how you would do it. I've got the name and I need to tie the length now as well. And this means that now, so for example, I could use the new ship constructor and then I can simply pass through destroyer and then the length of the destroyer to be two and save this as the const destroyer, which means that now destroyer and two will be saved to this const under the name and length attributes or properties. So if I console log destroy, I'm just going to show you and refresh. There's my destroyer. So now the const destroyer looks like this, thanks to the ship constructor. And I could use dot notation to get the name or the length. So we're going to be using this a lot. So let's go ahead and create the other ones too. We've got the destroyer. We also now need the sub marine so new ship like so what are the other ones we have the cruiser new ship so let's use the constructor let's also have the battle ship so new ship I'm using the constructor and then not cruiser and carry us yeah don't make the mistake again new ship there we go making sure that's a capital S it's a class okay so for submarine, I'm just going to pass through the string of submarine for the name. And the submarine's length is three. Let's also pass through the string of cruiser. And the length of this is three. We then have the battleship. The length of this is four. And then the carrier. Okay. And the length of this is five. So there's our ships. Let's carry on. I'm going to make an array of them, so const ships, and I'm just going to stick in the destroyer, the submarine, so essentially the objects that I made thanks to the ship class, okay, because we're going to have to loop over them in order to essentially create a bunch of ships visually. So there we go. So now this is going to be a little bit harder, but it's fine. We're going to randomly add pieces, so these ships, to our computer's board. Okay, let's do that first. I think that's the easier way to approach this. So I'm going to essentially write a function called add ship piece individual. And we're going to add each ship individually, right, first. And then we're going to loop five times, add all five. So to add a ship piece, well, we're going to have to pick out the board that we're working with. So I'm going to use document query selector and look for the board with the ID of computer. And then get all of its divs. So I'm going to use document query selector all, and I'm going to look for the element with the idea of computer, and then look inside that and get all of the elements that are divs, and save them as something. I'm going to save this as const all board blocks, just like so. So now if I console log this out to show you, console log all board blocks, and let's just call this function Ta-da! We get an array of 100 divs. So these ones right here, so there we go, all of the ones from the element with the ID of computer have just been saved in an array for us. Okay? Great. So that is good. 
And we do want to call this when the game starts because we want the computer to go ahead and add ship. So that is fine. And now, what do we want to do? Well, I think maybe let's get a random star index. So what I'm going to do is, let's define it first, let random start index equal. And I'm going to use math random, which will bring back a number from zero to just under one. So if I multiply it by 100, it should back, back bring back a new number from zero to just under 100. And we want to round that down. So we're going to pass it through math floor. So if I multiply this by width, multiply by width, so 100, that should give me a number. So this code will give me a number from zero to just under 100. And if I round it down, this whole code should give me a number from zero to 99 each time. So that will be assigned to random star index. Okay, great. So now that we have the star index, well, let's carry on. We need to also figure out, so I'm just gonna console log random star index for now. We need to figure out if the random star index is valid. Because if we have the carrier and then we go here, we can't really go there because our carrier will be kind of split, right? So we don't want that. So let's go ahead and just see what it looks like if we do keep random star index. Well, I think what we should do is check first if we are horizontal or not. So I think here, let is horizontal. Well, we want this to be random, right? So a great way to get a random Boolean, let random Boolean equals, now we use math random and they go less than 0 0.5. And this actually, this piece of code will return true or false. Okay, so that's how you get a random Boolean. And I'm just going to assign the random Boolean to is horizontal. So now let's go ahead and add a ship. I'm gonna go with destroyer. I'm gonna pass it through into add ship piece. So that means that we need to pass it through into here. So I'm gonna go with ship. So now we can use the length of this. So I'm gonna loop for let i equal zero. And as long as i is smaller than the ship and it's used dot notation to get the length from that object, I can increment i by one. And if is horizontal and that is true, well, then we want to essentially figure out which indexes we want to color with the class of destroyer. So let's collect them in an array. So let's ship blocks. I'm gonna keep this array empty for now. And if we are horizontal, so essentially we've got our random start index. At the moment, it's 36. And then we are horizontal at the moment, right? Let's just pretend we are horizontal. So I'm gonna go horizontal true. Well, then we want to essentially color in index 36, but also index 37, right? Because we're horizontal. We're going to go, that was 36. 36 and 37 needs to be hollered like the destroyer, so it needs to be brown. So what I can do is go essentially, we're getting all the board blocks, right? And then we're going to go into that array and find the and pass through the random index, we're passing through 36. Let's just make sure that is a number just in case any funky stuff happens. And we're gonna add i to it. So the first time we loop i is zero, so that will just essentially go into all our board blocks and pass through 36. And the next time we add i, it will be one, so 37 will be added, right? Because the ship length is 37, then we stop. So great, I know this might be difficult to understand, but hopefully it'll make sense in a bit. Okay, so we're going to, maybe we should, for now I'm just gonna console log this out. 
okay? And if horizontal is true, at the moment it is true, we're gonna go into all our board blocks. So remember that was an array of divs, 100 divs, and we're gonna essentially print out the div with the ID of 36 and the div with the ID of 37, thanks to this code. So if we refresh, there we go, we get back this div and this div. Okay, so it's that div with the ID of 96 and div with the ID of 97, we wanna give the class of destroyer to, so we wanna make brown. And once again, this time we did div ID one and two, and this time it's div with the ID of 54 and 55. So that's what we're doing, which is going into our array and bringing back those divs. And next, I'm just going to save them in ship blocks. So instead of console logging them out, I'm gonna use ship blocks and push in the first div and then the second div after that. Okay, that's it for horizontal. So let's just console log what ship blocks looks like. There we go, now we're saving those two divs, 70 and 71. 91 and 92, and so on and so on. So that's it for horizontal, right? Else, so I guess if we're vertical, I'm going to get the ship blocks array, and this time I'm gonna push in. Well, once again, I'm going to go into my array that I've saved all 100 divs in. I'm gonna go inside of it with the square brackets. I'm gonna pass you an index number. That's going to be random start index. Let's just make sure it's a number by passing it through the number constructor. And this time, instead of adding just i, I'm gonna get i and multiply it by the width because that is how you would get the block under you, right? So let's say the first time we loop, the random index is 74. That's fine because i multiplied by width is zero, so we just get 74. The second time we loop, we get the random index, which is 74. This time we have to plus i multiply by width. If i is one and we multiply it by the width, so 10, so essentially we're adding 10, we should add the div with the idea of 84 next, right? So visually, those two divs look stacked on top of each other. So let's check it out, right? This should be an add. So this time let's change horizontal to be false and let's see what gets pushed into our array. And indeed that's right, div 28 and div 38 and so on and so on. This is looking great. However, let's get to coloring them up next and I'm just going to assign a random boolean here instead of hard coding true or false. Wonderful. So now let's actually add the color, right? So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm just gonna get rid of that console log and ship blocks, so whatever we're storing in here, for each, let's just call it a ship block individual. And then I'm going to grab that ship block and use class list add just move this up a little bit and then whatever that ship objects name is so in this case it's going to be destroyer the string of destroyer as that exists on the object of destroyer great and i'm also going to add another class this is going to be class list taken okay because I also want us to be able to know if the space is taken or not. I'm not gonna add any siding to this, we're just gonna add a class name. Okay, cool. So let's see what this looks like. If I refresh, ta-da, we are now adding brown because that is a destroyer and randomly it's switching from horizontal to vertical. Now, if I wanna do this for all the ships, this is relatively easy. Instead of just adding destroyer, I'm gonna use this array, so the ships array, and I'm gonna write ships for each ship that lives inside of that array. I'm going to get the function add ship piece and just pass that ship into it. So just like so. Okay, so ta -da! there we go. Of course, we're getting errors though, because you know, there's lots of invalid places that we are going in. For example, like for that time, it's fine. They all kind of fit. But here, you know, the battleship is longer than uh, we have divs to go in and stuff like that is being cut off. 
and the same for here. Like half the ship is here, half the ship is there. We don't want that. So let's write some logic for this. Okay, let's do it. So let's go back to this function and let's have a look. So I'm going to declare a variable called valid start and we're going to essentially write if it's a valid start or not. So let's work with being horizontal first. So if is horizontal is true, if this is true, so we are horizontal, I want to get the random start index and check if it's smaller than or equal to the width multiplied by the width, which is 100. Okay, and then I'm going to minus the ship length. So let's talk this through. I'm checking. So for example, say we are horizontal here. Let's just refresh again. I'm just gonna comment that out. Okay, so maybe let's make it go at the bottom. So say we have our cruiser here and it is horizontal. I am checking if random start index, so on this occasion, what is random start index? It is ID 91. I'm checking if it is smaller than or equal to 100 minus the ship length. So 100 minus the ship length in this case will be somewhere here. So it will be 97. So this is 97. And as long as this start index is smaller than that ID, then it's valid, right? Then we can go there. So if this is true, then I just return the random start index. Okay. Otherwise, so dot dot means otherwise, I get 100, so width multiplied by width, minus the ship length. So essentially what I'm doing is pushing it. So if it's under here, say this cruiser, I decide that the random start index is here all of a sudden, it's gonna push it to be the most valid index, which is gonna be here and it's gonna go there. So any of these indexes will result in the ship appearing to be at the end here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Next up, so this is all for if it's horizontal. Otherwise, I'm going to, let's do handle vertical. Otherwise, I'm going to get the random start index and check if it's smaller than or equal to, once again, 100, so width multiplied by width. And this time I'm going to minus the ship length, sure. So just like we did above ship length. However, this time I'm multiplying it by the width. Okay. Because again, if it's vertical this time, I need to check the square under it. So that's what I'm doing this time. So if this is true, if it's smaller than 100 minus the ship length multiplied by the width, then it's valid. So we just return the random start index. Otherwise, I want to manipulate it and say that the random start index has to be minus the ship length. I'm just going to put this on a new line. Multiplied by width plus the width. Okay, so again, I'm just manipulating it to essentially be in the last possible available square if the ship is vertical. So there we go. We have just defined our valid star. I know that was complicated, so please take your time in taking that really slow and console logging everything out so you are comfortable with it. Great. So now that we have our valid start, what I can do is instead of passing through the random start index, I'm just going to pass through the valid start after it's done all the checks. Okay. So there we go. We are now essentially not letting any square that belongs to our ship go into a block that is over 100 and off our grid. However, a few more things to solve. We are still having issues with ships overlaying each other, as well as issues with ships splitting. Okay, so essentially we're going to have to check, for example, here, this carrier, 
we want to say that, you know, this would not be a valid move. This, if we put our carrier here, if the start block was here, that would be a valid move, right? As then it would finish here. But anything after that, so all of these are not valid, all of these are not valid, all of these are not valid, all of these are not valid. So let's write that for the horizontal one first. So if is horizontal, and that is true, I want to get the ship blocks, and let's check every single one. And I essentially want to get the ship block. And we actually don't need this. I just want it for the loop. So let's get our index in there. So just like so. Because I want to loop over each ship block. And I'm going to get the ship blocks. Well, we could get this. No, we need to just get the first one. So each time I just want to get the first one and get its ID. And I'm going to use modulus width. And the width should not equal width minus the ship blocks. Let's maybe just put this on another line. Length minus index plus one. Okay. So we're essentially checking this line. I'm not going to go to, into it in too much detail because it does involve an understanding of arithmetic operators like modulus and the every method. And if you want a deep understanding of this, please do check out my full stack developer course in the video description. But essentially what this piece of code is saying, make sure that that is in the curly braces, is that once again, if we're the carrier, we don't want to be able to go in any one of these squares. We only want it to be valid if we are, for example, in here, this would be valid as the whole carrier would then fit. This would be valid, this would be valid, this would be valid, all these valid, all of these not valid to go in. Okay, so that's what I've written. Else, let's handle the vertical. Else, I am going to get the ship blocks and use the every method. And then I'm once again, just going to get the ship block and get its index because we only really care about the index. We don't need the ship block, hence this underscore right here. And once again, I am going to get the ship blocks and get the first item and get its ID. And if it's smaller than 90 plus the width multiplied by the index plus one, then we know that is valid. So once again, with this one, let's maybe refresh this. This is valid for the cruiser. This, however, will not be valid for the cruiser. So all of these, I want to say, are not valid. And that is essentially what this piece of code is checking. So if this comes back as true and it is smaller, let's just save this under the variable valid. And again, save this under the variable valid. So if this is true, we save true to valid. And I'm just going to store it up here, let valid, and keep it empty for now. Great. So now, essentially, we only really want to add this class if valid is true, right? So if valid is true, then we add the ship class and the class I've taken. So let's just grab that and put it in here. We also want to account for if, you know, the space is taken or not. So once again, I'm going to get my ship blocks and I'm going to use the every method. And for every ship block that exists in the ship blocks, I'm going to get that ship block, get its class list. So all the classes that exist on it. And if it contains taken, well, you know, that space is taken. However, if it's not taken, then we know this whole thing is not taken. If every single one of the ship blocks does not have bang means not have the class of taken, well, we know that this whole thing is not taken. Okay, so not taken. So if the move is valid and all the squares are not taken, then we add the class of the ship name and taken. Wonderful. So great. We are nearly there. We just need to account for, you know, if it's not valid or not taken, right? So we're going to write an else for this. And if it's not, well, we just want to run the whole function again. So I'm going to get the add ship piece function and pass through a ship. So this will keep running essentially like a loop until it is valid and it is not taken. And we add the ship name and the class of taken. And we don't run the function again. So great. Let's check this out. And wonderful. These are all looking like valid moves. Let's carry on. 
The next thing I want to do is actually be able to drag items onto here and also account for if the moves are valid, right? Because we don't want to be able to drag here or here or here or anything like that. So let's do it. So I'm just going to do so down here. Drag player ships. So for this, well, I'm going to essentially get my option container again and get its children and make an array from it by passing this through into array from. So just like so. And now that we have an array from that, I want to save this as option ships. Okay, so there we go. And for each option ship that exists in that array, I want to add an event listener. So for each option ship singular, I'm going to grab the option ship and use add event listener to listen out for a drag start. So this is an event that we can listen out for. And if we do drag it, I just want to call the drag start function. So I'm going to define it here, drag start. And pass through an E. And I'm just going to console log E for now. Console log E target. So now if we drag items onto here, ta-da! we get the target, which is the element. Okay, and if I drag another one, it will show me which one I'm dragging. So this one is the submarine and this one should be the destroyer. Great. So what I want to do is just save this whole element so that we know what is being dragged. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to just save this up here. So let dragged ship. Okay, and it just means I can now assign e target to it. So there we go. The whole thing is being saved up here. So that is the drag star event. What I also want to do is get all the player blocks this time. So this time I'm going to use document query selector all and look for the element with the ID of player this time and get all the divs from it. So all 100 divs from the player board. And let's save this as all player blocks okay so just like so so let's grab the all player blocks now and for each one of them for each player block i want to grab the player block and use add event listener so dot add event listener to listen out for a drag over event so let's write a function called drag over, but another one too. So I'm going to use player block add event listener. And that's why I use the curly braces here. So we can have two to drop. And then we're going to write a drop ship function. Okay, so we have our drag start. Let's also do drag over. So function drag over. I'm going to pass through the E. And this time I'm just going to prevent the default action happening. Default, and we are going to write more here, but for now, I'm going to leave it and then I'm just going to write the function to drop ship. Okay, so the function to drop ship, well, we're going to have to figure out what block we are dropping in. So, e target ID, we're going to get that block's ID, and I'm going to save this as the start ID, as that's where essentially we want to start dropping our ship. And the next thing I'm also going to do is get the ship that we are dragging, right? So let's go into the ships array because I want to get the whole object. I don't care really about this div that we are saving, but what I do care about this div is the ID from it. So I'm going to use the drag ship div and get the ID from it in order to pass it into the ships array, which is this one, right? So that we can pick one out, which means we need to give each of these an ID. So the destroyer needs to have the ID of zero to so that we get the correct ship back. So let's give this the ID of zero. Let's give this the ID of one. Let's give this the ID of two and so on and so on. Okay. 
we can make them strings so that we don't have any issues further down the line as well. In fact, this should probably be strings anyway. Okay, it really actually doesn't matter too much, I don't think. Great. So we have that down. Let's carry on. So we have the new start ID of where we want to start dropping our ship. We have the actual ship from the array because we want to get that whole object. So now actually I can use the add piece method to pass through the ship. Okay, so I'm passing through the ship. I also, however, don't want a random start anymore. I want to use the start ID. So let's pass that through as well, which means that now on the add piece function, I'm going to pass through the start ID here. And we're just going to check. Well, we also probably want to pass through what user it is, right? Because here, when we are looping, we want to add the user of computer. However, here, we want to add the user of player. so that we know which board to communicate with. So back on here, when we pass through the user, we want to replace that user in here. So let's change these back ticks, because if we're the computer, we want to add to the computer board. So we get up our dollar sign and just pass through the user. Okay, so that is looking good. The random Boolean is fine, is horizontal. Well, if user equals player, then we don't really want it to be random. We want to get whatever the angle is. And if angle equals zero, then horizontal is true. Otherwise, we get the random Boolean, right? So we're going back to our angle that we used previously up here. OK, great. So this is looking good. The other thing we don't want anymore is the random start index. So let's define our start index. If a start ID exists, if that is true, we return the start ID. Otherwise, we return the random start index. So now instead of using the random start index, we want to use the start index after we've checked if the start ID exists. So let's replace it here. Let's replace it here. Let's also replace it here and here and here. And I believe that is it. Great. So now we're passing through three potential things into our add ship piece, the user, the ship and the start ID, which means we can reuse the add piece function for adding our ships to our own user board. When the computer is adding ships, it doesn't need a start ID because it gets a random ID. So we just pass through two parameters into that function and into here when the player's there. Well, we do have a start ID, so we pass through that third parameter. Great. And let's go back to the part where we add a ship piece. So this will keep trying. We only actually really want to do this if the user equals computer, right? Because if we are the player, so if user equals player, then we just want to say that not dropped equals true. We didn't drop it correctly, so not dropped equals true. And we want to put the piece back into the options. So just after where we define our ships, so let ships, I'm going to add a variable called not dropped. And we're going to leave it as nothing for now. However, when we actually drop, so let's go back to our events here. So that means that I want to on the drag event, on the drop ship, if it is dropped, essentially, then I want to get the dragged ship and remove it. OK, but only if it is dropped. So if not dropped is false, essentially. OK, and then we can restart it. So on the drag start, I'm going to put not dropped equals false. So we reset. 
Okay, so hopefully that should make this better now. Okay, so if we go here, that returns. However, if I do it successfully, it gets removed and we can flip them around. And there we go. So that is looking much better. Let's also work on the highlight section. So this is all looking wonderful for now. I'm just going to write a function to add highlight. So add highlight is going to go here. And let's define our function. So function highlight area. Let's pass through a star index, right? Because we know that and the ship that we are essentially currently dragging. So once again, I'm going to use document query selector all to look in my board that has the ID of player and get all the divs from it. And let's save this as something. I'm going to go ahead and save it as all board blocks, just like so. Now, let's also check if we are horizontal. So let is horizontal and then equals angle zero. So if angle does equal zero, then we know that we are horizontal, right? Okay, great. And now what I'm going to do is actually take all of the logic pretty much from our add ship piece. So everything from the checking if it's a valid start, collecting the blocks, checking if it's a valid move. Okay, all of that and as, as well as checking if it's not taken. And we're going to put it in the highlight function. So maybe a better way of doing this is just putting all of that in a function that we can reuse. So it is getting a little bit more complicated, but just bear with me. So all I'm going to do is perhaps up here, right, another function, let's call this handle validity as essentially that is what it is doing. And like I said, I'm just going to, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit from the valid start all the way to not taken. I'm going to just grab all of that and put it in the handle validity. So that is my whole handle validity function right now. But of course to use it, we're going to have to pass through a few things. Okay, because we're using variables in here that frankly don't exist. So let's go ahead and pass that through. We're going to have to pass through the all board blocks, whatever we defined as all our board blocks. It could have been the player blocks or the user blocks. We're going to pass through if it's horizontal or not. We're going to pass through the star index and we're going to pass through the ship we are working with. So now if we want to use this function, we have to pass through all these things, which is fine. And then we're going to return three things. We're going to return these ship blocks. We're also going to return if it is valid. And we're also going to return if it's not taken. Okay, so that is return is at the bottom of our new handle validity function. So now wherever I remove that function in the add ship piece, so we removed it here, I'm just going to call the function and pass through those things into it. Okay. So that's what I have done. I've called the handle validity, or maybe we should call this get validity as it's going to return those three things, which we can now get from here. So we can get the, well, essentially the ship blocks, the valid and the not taken. So those are the three things we can now get from here. And now we can use them in the rest of our function. So I'm just going to rename this to get validity like so. And once again, now that means that I can use this in the highlight area. So I can reuse all of that code. So all I'm going to do is use the function get validity. And this time I'm going to pass through once again, the all board blocks. That's fine. I'm going to pass through is horizontal. I'm going to also pass through the star index. And I'm also going to pass through the ship we are working with. And then this should return the ship blocks, so const ship blocks. It should also return if it's valid and not 
taken. Okay, so those three things so that we can now use it in our function. So this time, if it's a valid move and it's not taken, I'm going to get the ship blocks and I'm going to use for each and then I'm going to get each ship block. And then I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to get that ship block and use class list add and I'm going to add the class which we have not written yet of hover. But I also want that to disappear after a while. So I'm going to use set timeout and this time I'm going to remove that class. So just like we added it here, I'm going to paste that. I'm going to remove it. So add remove instead of add. And then I'm going to make that happen after 500 milliseconds. So let's add the class of hover, I guess. So let's go ahead and do that in here. So at the bottom, dot hover. I'm going to just give background color of gray. I'm also going to add a few more classes. One is going to be boom. So I'm going to give this a background color of red. And then it's also have uh, empty. Let's give this gray as well. So, you know, if we like miss one when we uh, take our go. So great, that is the highlighted area. So now how do we use this? Well, we're going to essentially use it in our drag over. So when we are dragging over, I also want to get the ships. So I'm going to look in the ships array and I'm going to pass through the dragged ship ID so we can get the correct ship out. And I'm just save this as ship. And now I'm going to get that highlight area function. I'm going to pass through the ID. So this is going to be the star ID essentially. So E target ID of the block that we are hovering over, right? So I've just got this ID and assigned it to star ID and the ship. Okay. So let's check it out. Now, if I drag, something is wrong. Now, let's just make sure that on the add ship piece, we've got the same structure because we did do a lot of stuff at once. So in the add ship piece here, we also need to add, pass through the user first before passing through the ship, just because that is the order that we have our parameters set up in. So in fact, I mean, this could be computer because we're literally saying if user equals computer, then add piece computer. Or we could have user because whatever user we are working with should be correct. It should be computer. That part is up to you. And we're also going to pass through the start ID. Okay, great. So now let's check this out. I'm just going to drag and we have the hover that is looking good. We can see where we are dropping our piece. And if it doesn't work, it just gets put back there. Wonderful. I'm so happy with how this is looking so far. And we can go in all the places that we want. Great. So now let's write the game logic. So let's do that next. So I'm just going to do so down here. Well, first off, let's start with game over being false. So game over is false. And at the moment, we're also going to leave the player turn empty because we haven't assigned a player turn yet. So I've just gone ahead and done that. Next, I want to be able to start game, right? So let's write a function to do that. I'm going to call it function start game. So just like so. And this start game function, well, we're going to have to essentially hook it up perhaps to the start button. So let's grab the start button and I'm just going to define it up here. So const start button equals document query selector. And we're going to look for something with the ID of start button, which means we can now grab that start button and all the way down here, I'm going to add event listener to listen out for clicks on it. And if we click on it, we start the game. So start game, right? We just call this function. However, we only really want to start the game if all the pieces are essentially, you know, on the board, right? So how can we do that? 
I think if we look, so if option container children length does not equal zero, right? So there is stuff in there, then we can say info display. So let's grab the info display. So I think this one right here, the span with the ID of info. So let's go all the way back up here again. Const info display document query selector and look for something with the ID of info. And perhaps let's also do the other one. So const turn display equals document query selector. And then look for the element with the ID of turn display. So once again, ID for turn display. So we've defined those two. Let's get the info display and use text content to just show the text. Please place all your pieces first, right? Because that's something that we want to do. Else, you know, if everything, if there's no more children, so the option container has no length, I want to essentially be able to click on the computer's game board, right? So I'm going to use document query selector all to look for the element with the ID of computer and get all its divs because I want to assign event listeners to them. So const all board blocks is what I'm going to call this. And I'm going to get all the board blocks and I'm going to for each block I'm going to, let's just call it block, spell that correctly. So for each block, I'm going to add event listener and listen out for clicks on it. So click. And then we're going to handle the click. OK, so we're going to write a function for that. So that is something that I essentially want to do. And then if we click on one of these, so let's maybe write that function here. Function handle click and pass through an E because we want to essentially, if the game is not over, right? Because we want to check that we can only make stuff happen if the game is not over. And if E target class list contains taken so essentially if we click on one of the computer's squares and the class list contains taken right so for example like here this one has a class of taken but we know that there's a ship there right so we then want to add the class of boom so if this is true i am going to essentially get the e target class list add boom okay so that is what I want to do. I'm also going to add some text to the info display. So I'm going to go info display text content. And let's just put you hit the computer's ship, right? Because that is what happened. You can make it single quotes. You can make it double quotes. It should be consistent, but we can clean that up later. So that is something that I want to happen. Let's check it out. So essentially, if I try to that and I start the game it says ah please place all your pieces first so I'll be forced to place all my pieces okay and only once I've placed all the pieces then I can start and I can hit the computer ship of course I want to delay this I, I don't want to be able to click straight away so let's write that next so you hit the computer ship great next I actually want to also uh, collect just the name of the ship in an array because if I click on a carrier and I collect the name carry into array and if we suddenly have how many five of these then I know that I've sunk the ship right so for this I need to filter out the class of boom and taken or block so let's do that next so I'm going to essentially uh, create an array from the e targets class list. So I'm going to get all the classes on the square that we just clicked. And I'm going to save this as classes. I've used let as we're going to have to override this. So let's get the classes and I'm going to filter by class name. And I'm going to get that class name and essentially 
built out everything that does not have the class of block and assign it back to the variable classes. Okay, so now this class list will not have block. I'm going to do that two more times. I'm going to do the same for boom. So I'm just filtering out any words I don't want in my array and taken so that we are just left with the ship names in there. Okay, and once I was done, I'm going to actually store all this. So I'm going to store it as let player hits and an empty array. Let's also do the same for computer hits, computer hits, empty array. I'm going to get my player hits and I'm just going to essentially push in. I'm going to empty out the array and just put in the classes in there. Okay, so if I console log player hits, save that. Let's get our console log out. If I click here, first we have to, of course, drag all these in. So maybe let's flip one. Hit start. Okay, so I've hit the battleship, battleship, battleship. I've hit battleship, battle submarine. So we're just saving the classes, right, of the ships. We're not saving block and taken or boom, we're not saving any of those. Great. So this is looking good. That is a cool way in order to just pick out certain classes from an element. Next, we're going to have to write a function to check the score. However, we want to do more things in the handle click as well, right? Because if we hit a square, so E target, we're going to get the square. And if class list contains, essentially if it doesn't contain the class of taken, well, we know that we've not hit a ship. So if that square does not contain, bang means not contain the class of taken, then we want to get the info display. We're going to get text content and we're going to write the text of nothing hit this time. Okay. And then we're actually going to give that square, so e target class list add the class of empty, just so we know that um, we've hit it already. It should go gray. Great. So now we should be saving whose turn it is, right? So that's why I have saved player turn here. So essentially, if we start the game, we add the event listener to all the squares to handle the click. We essentially go so this is us clicking then after all of this is run so if this if statement has run and if this if statement has run we want to get the player turn and make it false and then we want to essentially get the document use query selector all to look for all the computer divs and let's save this as all board blocks. Okay, I'm going to remove the event listener now. So I'm going to use for each block and a way to remove all event listeners is use block replace with and then we're going to get the block and clone node. True. If you know a different way, please do let me know. That's how I remove event listeners from all items, okay, if there's like more than one. And then I'm going to use a set timeout because I want some time to pass uh, until our computer goes. So let's wait three seconds for that. So I pass you 3000 milliseconds. So now let's write our function for the computer go. So let's just do that down here. Okay, maybe let's put that start button event listener next to the start. Great. So now let's define the computers go function computer go. And if the game is not over, right, we want to check if that game is not over because we only want this to happen if the game is not over. I'm going to get the turn display and I'm going to put text content. It's the computers go. So the string computers go. 
right? Because we just want to show that. And let's also get the info display text content and show the text of the computer is thinking dot dot dot, right? It's kind of simulating it thinking. Next, again, in a set timeout because I want to give some time before the computer actually, you know, picks its go. Let's define our random go. And for this, once again, I'm going to use math random. I'm going to multiply it by width, multiply by width, so essentially 100. And I'm going to pass this through math floor so that it gives us a number from 0 to 99, essentially. So that is what that piece of code does. Now let's get all the player blocks, right? So I'm going to use document query selector all and look for the ID of player and get all the divs from it. So that's what I have done. And then let's save this as all board blocks once again, all board blocks. And now what I'm going to do, so again, still in the set timeout, I'm going to say that if all board blocks and open it up and pass through that random index essentially. So our random go class list contains taken. Well, then we know we've hit something, right? However, let's just make sure that if it contains taken, but you've already gone there, it's kind of a waste of the computer. So I'm just going to be nice and, you know, just let it go again, essentially. So if it contains taken, and the random go contains boom, we essentially just want the computer to go again. Okay, so it gets a second chance because, you know, it's just going randomly. So I think that's fair. And let's return out of this. Okay, else if all board random go class list contains taken and does not contain boom, then we can add the boom. So I'm just going to go into it, go into the random go and add the class of boom. So change this to be add. Great. And then I'm going to get the info display and get the text content and just put the string of the computer hit your ship, right? Because that's what happened. Great. And once again, we're just going to use essentially this logic right here. So perhaps I'm just going to copy it because we're going to create an array from all the classes that exist on that block. We're going to remove the class of block boom and taken from it. So let's copy all of this. I'm just going to paste it in like so. And this time in the computer hits, we're going to push, and we're going to spill out the content of that array. Okay, great. Wonderful. So that's what we're going to do. Else, we're just going to get the info display, use text content and just put the string nothing hit this time. And this time get the random go class list and add the class of empty. Great. And we want this to happen after 3000 milliseconds, so three seconds. Wonderful. So we are still in the function for the computer go because after three seconds have passed, I want another three seconds to pass. So I'm going to use set timeout again. So I'm going to actually have to put 6000 milliseconds this time because three plus three is six. And after that has passed, I'm going to turn it back to our turn. So player turn is true. We're going to get the turn display text content and put your go. We're going to get the info display text content and put please take your go. And then we're going to add the event listener back to all the computer divs. So we're going to use document query selector all and get the ID 
of computer and get all the divs that live inside that element. Let's save this to all board blocks, just like so. And then for each of those blocks, for each of the blocks, I'm going to get each block and use add event listener on it to listen out for clicks and then handle click. Okay, great. So that is it. It's a long one for the computer go function. So this is looking good. The last thing we need to write is a function that actually check the score, as in like check how many uh, ships we have hit. You know, if we hit five, then we win. We also want to actually display which ship we have hit. So for this, I'm going to write a function called check score, just like so. Making sure to spell function correctly. And into this, well, where do we want to check the score? So let's grab this function. I think we should check the score right after we hit something, right? So here, we'll probably, that looks good. So we're going to check the score. We're going to pass through the user. So here in the handle click with the player, we're going to pass through the current player hits. And we're going to also pass through the player sunk ships. So how many ships we actually sunk. Okay, because this is just collecting the hits. So it will have like battleship, battleship, cruiser, cruiser. But after we've hit a whole battleship, we want to remove it from the player hits and put it into a new array. I'm going to use const this time because we don't have to overwrite this. And this is going to be player sunk ships. It's going to be an empty array. And let's also have the computer one. So computer sunk ships and an empty array. Great. So that's what we're going to pass through into our check score function. And also when the computer hits one of ours, we're also going to have to do that. So we're going to also check the score here. This time it's the computer checking the score. And we're going to pass through the computer hits as well as the computer sunken ships. So computer sunk ships, the, essentially the ones the computer sunk. So in our check score function, those are the three things we are passing through. We're passing through the user that we are currently working with, the user hits, and the user sunk ships, okay? Now, I'm actually going to write another function in here that's gonna be check ship. And I'm just gonna pass through the ship name as well as the ship length, right? Because we're going to have to look in our array. So if let's get our user hit. So let's pretend we are the player playing. We just hit the battleship once more. We've sunk the battleship. Essentially, there's two or let's go with the destroyer because we know that's two. So we're going to filter out in that whole array. Let's call this a stored ship name. And for each stored ship name, if it equals the ship name that we currently hit, okay, and let's get its length. And if that equals the ship length, we know we've got all the pieces associated with that ship, right? Okay, and if we do, we're going to get the info display text content. And we're going to just display, we're going to use back ticks. You sunk the, and if it's the player, so if it's us, it's going to say players, or if it's the computers, it's say computers. I'm just going to put users and then the ship name, right? Okay, so I think that's fine. Let's just test it out to make sure. Just make sure that says block, just exactly the same. So let's check this for the destroyer ship. The destroyer's length is two. Let's also check ship for the submarine. Submarine is three. So essentially we're calling this function many times for each ship. This one is cruiser and it is three in length. Let's also use check ship for the battleship. And its length is four. 
And finally, I'm going to use check ship to check the carrier. And this is five in length. Okay, I'm just going to console log what all of this looks like. So I'm going to console log player hits and just show you the player hits array. And let's also do the console log player sunk ships player sunk ships. Okay, great. So let's check this out for now and how it looks. Once again, let's just place all of these and place these away. Let's flip one. Okay, let's start the game. So if I click here, I hit a computer ship. It's a cruiser. So that has been put in my player hits. I haven't sunk any ships yet. I have to wait for the computer to go. It didn't hit anything. It says, please take your go now. Ah, so now I've got cruiser and cruiser in here. I still haven't sunk a ship though. The computer's thinking it's going to take its go. It went there. It hit nothing. So now if I hit here, I should have cruiser, cruiser, cruiser and player sunk ships should be cruiser. Okay. So great. It says you sunk the player's cruiser. So that message showed up. And if we now go one more time, so if I click here, uh, the player sunk ships, well, we are not updating that yet. And we are not removing these from here yet. We want to remove them and just add cruiser into the player sunk ships, right? So we can start again. So let's go ahead and do that now. We also got an error message here. Why is that? Ah, uh, yes, because we're not making an array from the, the target. We're making an array from the random go. So let's just replace that like so. Great. So let's carry on with this function. So we are collecting all the ones that we have hit. However, once we have essentially you know, hit a ship. We want to remove it from the player hits. So I'm going to show you how to filter that out next. We're going to do so in here. So just under the info display. Now we can't assign it back to user hits because it won't work. We have to assign it to the player hits up here if we are a player, right? So that is why I'm going to check if the user is the player, well then I'm going to get the player hits and I'm going to get the user hits and filter the stored ship name. I'm going to get the stored ship name and filter out everything that doesn't equal the ship name. Okay, so that's what I've done. That should get rid of the ship name from the array if we sync a ship. Okay, great. And the same for the computer. So in fact, I'm just going to copy that, paste that in, change it if the user is the computer. Well, then we want to update the computer. It's wonderful. And now I'm just going to get whatever the user sunk ship is and push the ship name. Great. So let's check it out once more. Once again, I'm just going to place these in, flip some around. So there we go. Let's start our game. So if I click on here, you hit the computer's ship. Great. The computer is thinking and it hit nothing. So if I hit here, great. I've sunk the player's destroyer and now in my player sunken ships, the destroyer is in there. So this is looking wonderful. The logic is there and now I can essentially start again and my player hits has the cruiser and if I now hit the cruiser, so let's go ahead and hit the cruiser. Two cruiser exists there. I need one more in order to sync this. Nothing hit that time. And great, I've sunk the player's cruiser. So this game is looking wonderful. We have nearly finished. So now all I want to do is say that essentially if OK, 
Okay, if player sunk ships length equals five, then the info display text content should say, you sunk all the computers ships. You won. Right, so that's what I want to say. Make sure that's in the curly braces. And if the computer sunk ships reaches five, well, then I want this to say the computer has sunk all your ships. You lost. Right, that is the correct logic. And I also want game over to be true because I don't want to be able to interact with the game anymore. So game over equals true. Great. So I think this looks good. What else do we need to do? I think also in the start function, what we need to do is also just say that player turn equals true, but also turn display should be text content. You'll go so that we know what to do. And also the info display text content should be the game has started because otherwise we don't really have any prompts to let us know this. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and added that, which means that, you know, uh, we don't want this to happen, right? If, I think as long as player turn is undefined, then we do this. So if player turn equals undefined, well then we can essentially do all of this. Right, but if it's defined, we don't want to be able to press that start button anymore. So let's just also put that in the else, right? After we've added clicks to everything. And now, if I try start this, it won't start. It says, please place all your pieces first. Okay, and even if I try again, it doesn't work. If I place all the pieces, so go ahead and place all your pieces. Now we can start, it says, you'll go, the game has started. So I can hit, but if I press that again, it doesn't show up again, right? The game just carries on. So this is looking good. Let's get rid of the uh, coloring to the computer board because we want to actually be able to play this. So what I'm going to do is back on the style sheet, I'm going to say that if a div with a class of destroyer lives inside the element with the ID of computer, or, or and in other words, an element with a class of submarine lives inside an element with the idea of computer and you get the idea. Let's do the same for the cruiser, the battleship and the carrier. Well, then I want the background color to be pink. Uh, however, I do want to make sure that the boom is overridden. So I'm going to make this important and also override if it has the class of empty. So it should look like this now. I am going to cheat because, you know, I just want to make sure everything works. But I think let's start our game. So I'm just going to drop in my pieces as usual. That one didn't work, so it's been returned. Let's flip. So I'm just placing them, those are mine. And let's start the game. It's my go, the game has started. I am going to cheat, like I said. So we know that this is a carrier, so I'm just gonna hit it. I hit the computer's ship. Okay, the computer is thinking, and then I can go. Oh, it hit my ship, but I hit the computer's ship next, right? So this is kind of cool, and I'm obviously cheating because I'm just inspecting the elements. Computers go, nothing at that time. I hit the computer ship. And then I'm gonna go here next to so just wait for the computer to have its go. I can't go until the computer's finished thinking. I hit the computer ship. And if I go here, I should actually sync the carrier. So again, I'm just waiting for my turn. And then I'm going to, cool, I sunk the player's carrier. That should be the computer's carrier. So why is that not working? Hold on. 
you sunk the Uh, okay, so I think we should grab this in here. If this player, then this should say the computer's ship. And this should say the computer sunk your... There we go, that's much better. I'm happier with that. So let's try again. Okay, once again, I'm just going to place them like so. Just want to make sure this like 100% works before I publish this video. Okay, let's start the game. It's my go first. Let's inspect. So let's find one, right? The submarine's there. I hit the submarine. And then let's go there next. Let's just wait for the computer to finish. Nothing at that time. You hit the computer ship. Yay, that's good. The computer is thinking, the computer is thinking very hard. He hit nothing. And then, oh, that's interesting. What is that? So that is a submarine, that's a submarine, that's a submarine. I go here. I sunk the computer's submarine, yay. So that's good. Let's find another ship for us to sink. So let's find one. Oh wait, something was here, cruiser. Okay, so I'm gonna sink the cruiser next. Let's attack the cruiser. Let's wait for the computer to go. Obviously the computer has a disadvantage because it's just going randomly, but you know, if you want to try add logic to make it go not randomly, that would be really fun. Please share your solution with me. I would love to see that. So as soon as I can go, I will go. And I sunk the computer's cruiser. That's good, only three more to go. So where's the destroyer? That's a quick one to sink. Well done. Hmm. Very difficult to find these for some reason. Battleship, okay, there we go. Computer ship, computer is thinking. Battleship is here. You, you, oh, the computer hit your ship. Great, good for you computer, but I hit your ship next. Okay, the computer is thinking again. So I think I'm gonna go here. Nothing hit this time. I hit the computer ship. I mean, I am cheating, so it's so much easier. And the computer is going randomly. It'd be very embarrassing if the computer beat me. So great, nearly there. I've now sunk the computer's battleship. Yes, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we just need the longest one to the cruiser, I think, and the, uh, sorry, the carrier and the battleship, right? So here's the carrier. Computer is thinking. So now I'm gonna go here. I hit the computer's ship. And then nothing hit that time. It's nice where we can see, I guess, where the computer is going. The computer is thinking, come on computer, you can do it. I have faith, nothing hit that time. Okay, it's fine. I am winning so far. The computer's thinking, nothing hit that time, but I have sunk the computer's carrier. Last is the destroyer, but this is like a tiny two block one. So where is it? Where are you? Where are you? Oh no, oops, I pressed the wrong one. It's fine. The computer can have this one. It's okay, I'm good. There we go, destroyer. So I'm gonna go with destroyer. I hit the computer ship and one more. Come on. Computer is thinking. And I'm just gonna go here. And I sunk all the computer ships. I won, this is good. Woohoo, and now we can't go anywhere. The game is over, you can't click. I love this. Please take this, make this your own, improve on it. Definitely improve the styling. I mean, it's so basic. And if you can implement some kind of logic to the computer's moves, please do share it with me. That would be absolutely incredible. And I would love to see. Thanks so much again. And I will see you again soon.